experience, what do you think about the Latin American relationship with socialism? Why do we believe in it? What, why do we have this tendency? Well, that's a great question. So first off, I think that socialism is an easy sell, right? People who have not lived under it especially fall prey to it, and I think we see that currently happening here in this country in America. And that is that it, it's, like a, it's like a romantic movie. It's like a Disney fantasy, right? It's we're going to provide everything for you. We're all going to be equal. Everything is going to be wonderful. But the reality like a relationship, you know, when you see one on TV, it's beautiful. And then the real world application of that is something a little different. And that is that it takes work and that it takes more than. You cannot just have a government come in and give you everything. It doesn't work that way. And so they sell that idea and it's, it sounds great, but in the application it's never worked. And then there's also the other half of this. It's not just the selling point of it, it is that Cuba and Fidel Castro has had this mission, this plan for all of Latin America for the last 63 years, and that was to turn all of Latin America into a united type of USSR. This isn't something that I'm coming up with. You can hear about it yourself in Fidel Castro's own words. He wanted something like this, and he has been planning it. He trained Hugo Chavez, he trained Pedro, and these are things, and it, he had a big part in Nicaragua. He has a big part in FARC, which is uh, Colombia. This is something that has been planned and put into motion. So you have a plan that has been executed very well, and then you have this idea that is very easy to sell. So it's, it's almost twofold. It's, it's almost like the perfect storm came together and is now what we're seeing. Um, I grew up in Venezuela. I'm not Venezuelan. I'm Cuban. And um, Cuba's very much invaded Venezuela. Um, and, and that country that, that was prosperous and was at the time in the uh, 80s, one of the most prosperous nations in Latin America is now one of the poorest. And that is the thing that I, I try to emphasize to people who talk about socialism here in the United States. You just can't, it, it's not the recipe it's not the chef that introduces this recipe. It's the recipe that's broken. Socialism has never worked. It will never work. Uh, Daniel, same question. Please. Yeah, uh, well, I think that first it's important to remark why does this matter to Americans, right? And I think that it's, Latin America is such an important case for us because in most of these Latin American countries, people voted for these governments that are destroying their own nations. And if that's ever going to happen in the United States, it's going to be because there's, a uh, democratic election where people vote people in into office that start implementing massive regulations, massive taxation that ends up stagnating our economies and leading into this cycle of we vote a socialist into power, then somebody else comes in, then they don't do things right again, and then a socialist comes again into power. And that's what we're seeing in Argentina, and that's what we're seeing now in Colombia, and, and we're seeing it in Chile and everywhere else. Um, so, so Martha touched in, in an important cause. There is an international uh, strategy of re uh, socialist regimes like Cuba, now Venezuela, Nicaragua, who sponsor political parties abroad that give them money, like this is actual, you know, financing to destabilize other countries. Cuba does this, Venezuela gave money to Podemos, which is a political party in power in Spain. Uh, Chavez, as part of the Foro de Sao Paulo, which is an international organization of socialist parties, they meet every year to organize how to take over new countries. Like, this is like an open conspiracy. Um, and, and that's one side, but the other cause is that the right and the liberals, uh, properly understood, classical liberals in Latin America, don't do well when they get elected. Or the oppositions, when they get elected, they really don't do much. You know, we saw what happened in Argentina. Macri took over after Cristina Fernandez. And what did he do? Inflation stayed in 20, 30%. And Argentinians, after four years, were this guy disappointed us. So let's vote the same people to destroy our country in the first place back in. And in Bolivia, they had an opportunity to, with, with Janet Nunez. Um, and what happened was that she organized new elections, and the Bolivians voted again for the, for the socialists. So how do we break that cycle? And this is even outside of Venezuela, where we don't even have the, the choice to vote. You know, I'm from Venezuela. I came to the United States six years ago. And you know, it, it all started democratically. So how do we stop America 
and other countries from entering into the cycle in the first place? And I think that the answer to that is that we need to make sure this country and other countries are prosperous yeah. so that people never feel the need to vote for socialists in the first place. If Venezuela had been prosperous in the 90s, if there hadn't been crises, because Venezuela was okay, of course, by today's standards, I mean, yeah, but people were not starving, but not, but it was not okay either. There, there was a crisis, there was still high inflation, not hyperinflation, but, but things were not all right, and that's why people felt the need to vote for Hugo Chavez in the beginning. So we need to stop those conditions from, from happening in the first place.